In this video, I'm going to show you how to get NES emulation up and running on the Wii U using RetroArch. The NES is one of the most iconic systems ever released, and despite it not being one of my more favorite systems, it has a library of just some truly amazing titles. While the NES had a strong presence on the Wii U Virtual Console, there were a large number of games missing that I personally love to play. And thanks to emulators like RetroArch, we have a way to do so on the Wii U, and it is fantastic. So in this video, I'm going to go over how to get NES games up and running on the Wii U version of RetroArch using the Nestopia Core, set up a games playlist, and go over some of the core's advanced options. So let's dive in. To get started with NES emulation, you need NES games, and there is a wide variety of ways to get these these days. So you could dump your own physical collection of NES games using something like Infinite NES Live's Retro Programmer slash Dumper, or alternatively, you can rip them from an NES Classic, the Wii Virtual Console, even the Wii U Virtual Console, if you want to use them on the Wii U RetroArch just to get better emulation quality. No matter what method you decide to use, once you have sourced your NES games, all we need to do is put them on our Wii U SD card. So I made a folder on my Wii U SD card named RetroArch ROMs. This is where I'm putting all of my emulated games that I'm using on RetroArch. So I'm just going to open this folder up and put my NES games inside. Once you have your games placed, you can close out of your SD card, pop it out of your computer, and put it back into the Wii U and get it booted up. Just as a reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original Wii U RetroArch install video, so please refer back to that video for initial setup of Wii U RetroArch, as well as steps on how to install a forwarder channel like you see here on my Wii U home screen. But anyways, now that we got that out of the way, go ahead and boot into RetroArch using either the Homebrew Launcher or this RetroArch forwarder channel. Once RetroArch is loaded, we are free to begin loading up our NES games, so the long and slow way of doing this, you can go to Load Core, press right on your D-pad to go down to Nintendo, find our Nestopia Core, and press A to load it. After the core is loaded, we can go back down to Load Content, scroll to our SD card, find the folder where we stored our NES games, so again, I put mine in a folder just named RetroArch ROMs, yours will be wherever you put them. Find my NES games, and now I can press A on an NES game, select the current core, and it will run it. Again, this is the slow method, so instead what I like to do is create a games playlist. So back on the RetroArch main menu, there is a nice little import content tab down here. From here, go to manual scan, content directory, choose your NES games folder. So again, mine was in SD, RetroArch ROMs, NES games, scan this directory. Now for system name, press right on your D-pad to go down to Nintendo and find Nintendo Entertainment System. There we go. Now for default core, I am going to be using Nestopia, so Nintendo, Nestopia UE. And make sure you have scan recursively set to on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And if you have your game zipped, make sure scan inside archives is on. And once you have your options set the way you need them, start the scan. And after the scan is complete, you will have a new Nintendo Entertainment System playlist down here on the left. And now that the playlist is made, just go to a game, press A, and press A again to run it. And there we go, NES games up and running in the Wii U version of RetroArch. Very simple tutorial this time around. Just put your games in the SD card, load them up. So for those of you looking to get NES games that weren't included on the Wii U Virtual Console up and running in RetroArch, those are the basic steps required. But if you're interested in seeing some of the more advanced things that you could do using RetroArch emulation for NES games, stick around because I'm going to go over those now. So pressing the home button on our Wii U gamepad will bring up the RetroArch quick menu. From here, we can scroll down to options. And the first option available to us is a Blark and TSC filter. And I love these things. This lets you mimic a bunch of different screen types. 
So for a lot of people, you may have grown up playing games on the NES in monochrome on an old black and white TV, so you can mimic that using this filter, and it's really cool. Then of course you can also mimic composite video, S video, and RGB outputs. Um, RGB appears to be hecka broken, so uh, maybe no go on the RGB thing. Or you can just leave it off if you like having the sharpest pixel output possible. Next we have a color palette selection. So the NES actually didn't have a traditional color palette. It was really dependent on the user's display what NES games actually looked like. So for a lot of people, the sky in Super Mario Brothers is purple. For other people, it's blue. It's really interesting. So again, there are a number of options to choose from here. So for anyone looking for the most authentic NES experience, you're going to be best off with one of the Firebrand X color palettes. But just as a quick example here, this is the default color palette that Nestopia uses. And then you can have the composite direct from Firebrand X. As you can see, it's a little more muted, but that is honestly what NES games looked like for a lot of people. Personally, for NES, I do prefer to have the CXA 2025 AS palette. I just like having the more vibrant colors, which is really funny because I'm all about washed out colors for like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance simulation, but NES, it's like, give me the colors. Oh, well. And I really suck at Contra Force. Just don't even worry about it. Our next option is the remove sprite limits. So NES games had a ton of flickering on a number of titles due to the sprite limit per scan line. With this option enabled, it will get rid of the flickering entirely. So play around with this, see how you like it. I personally prefer the authentic flickering. Next up, we have a CPU overclock for the NES. So if there's an NES game that has hardware-induced lag, you could try overclocking the CPU to try to make it not lag. Again, I just leave mine on 1x because I prefer authenticity. Next is an option for the four-player adapter. I can't get multiple controllers to work on the Wii U version of RetroArch yet, so this option's kind of useless. Next, we have an option for Famicom Disk System. I'm not going over Famicom Disk System stuff because I don't own that system. I don't have the BIOS for it or any games for it, so I literally can't set it up. Our next two options are to mask over scan. So by default, vertical is on. You can turn it on or off for either one, depending on what you like. This basically just hides garbage data that's usually outside of a CRT's display range for older TVs. Next, we have preferred aspect ratio. So we can set this to NTSC pal or just straight up 4x3. I personally prefer 4x3 because that's what games were supposed to be stretched to on displays of the time, so I like to set it to 4x3. Our next option is an interesting one, so if you played with a Game Genie a lot on the NES back in the day, it would actually add sound distortion to certain games. So for those that used to use a Game Genie a lot, you may be used to this sound distortion, so you can enable it or disable it if you want to. It's a Really random inclusion, but I think there are a number of people out there who probably appreciate it. Next, we can manually set the system region. It should be fine for most everyone if, when it's set to auto, but if something isn't being detected properly, you can manually set it here to try to overcome that. Ignore RAM power on state. Now the next option is another interesting one, but this one relates to controls, and you can actually shift controls clockwise to make them a little bit more comfortable to play. So by default, it, A on the gamepad is A for the NES, and B on the gamepad is B. But if you enable this option, it will rotate the buttons, so B is A, and Y is B. So it's a lot more comfortable to play it, because it's the more natural layout of your thumb. So you can mess around with this and see what you think. Next up, we have an option for our Zapper device, and this lets us play NES light gun games on the Wii U, so... Press A on Zapper device and change it to Pointer. And now using the Wii U gamepad touchscreen, we can actually play light gun games just by tapping the screen. I mean, it kind of gets rid of the entire challenge of Duck Hunt, but you know what? That dog can suck it. Our next option lets us choose the turbo speed of our controllers. So you can change this from 2 all the way up to 9. And then finally, last in the menu, we have show advanced audio settings. So to enable this, we just press A, then we got to back out of the options menu and then come back in. And now we will have a slew of new audio options. So we could choose what the square channels, triangle channels, noise channels, and all these other channels all do. 
I'm not that big of an audiophile, so I'm not exactly sure what each and every single one of these individually do. But if you're really into NES audio, the options are here for you to mess with it to really customize the sound to your liking. But I'm just going to go ahead and close that down. That way my menu is a little cleaner. But that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned within Nestopia. Once you have everything set up the way you like, you can save it as either a game override or an overall core override. So I'm going to go ahead and save mine as a core override. That way every time I load up an NES game, these are the settings that will greet me. Now typically in this part of the video I'd start covering shaders, but I'm going to save shaders for the Wii U until the very end of the core videos. That way I can go over all the shaders and show you how to get them set up and running. So stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it as far as NES emulation on the Wii U is concerned. Super simple and straightforward to get set up and lots of customization options to really make it look the way you want. And even some light gun support for games that needed it. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below and I will do my best to help you out. But now if you could all do me just a huge favor and make sure you hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. Really helps out a ton, and I cannot thank you all enough for that. This place is growing immensely. Thank you so much. And for those of you who'd like to further help support the channel, you can always click that join button here on YouTube or check out that Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping the channel going, and I really appreciate the thought, and thank you to everyone who has already done so. You are my friggin' champions, and ah, just thank you so much. But I really think that's gonna do it for this one, so until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you back next video.